Getting the bushings out of a control arm can be a real pain in the butt, but there is a really easy way using map gas to suffocate and die. Don't burn bushings out of these things. It's the worst way to do it. You could also just drill a whole bunch of holes around there and then try work your drill bit around it and end up snapping the drill bit off inside. Or you can use a method that I'm going to show you here today using tools that a lot of you are already going to have in your shop. And if you don't, you can pick them up on Marketplace for dirt cheap or just head down to your local hardware store and they're going to have them in stock. Before we actually dive into the removal process though, let's take a look at the bushings so you've got an idea what you're working with and what our end goal is. So the bushings pretty much all look the same or are the same basic design for most control arms. You're going to have a metal shell on the outside here, you're going to have a rubber isolator, and then you're going to have this big chunk of metal on the inside that the control arm bolt actually goes through. Our goal is to get that centerpiece out so that we can then get the shell out. If you're wondering why we don't just press it out of the control arm or try and hammer it out in one piece, well, give it a shot and let me know how it goes. Then you can watch the rest of the video and get it out this way. Of course, if that's all there was to these bushings, I could just use the ever so popular drill bit method and just drill a bunch of holes around the outside and cost myself a whole bunch of drill bits. There's a little bit of a surprise that these things have in store and I'm gonna show you the culprit at the end of the video. In the meantime, hit that like and subscribe and let's keep going. First thing I'm gonna do here is secure my control arm into a vise because I have a vise and vises make this a heck of a lot easier than trying to just do it on the floor. Then I'm gonna grab myself a hole saw and I'm looking for one that's going to go over top of the center section, but fit inside of the outer shell. Now, we need to drill. My suggestion to you would be not to use the drill that you probably want to go and grab because, well, as powerful and as great as these things are, this is gonna be pretty abusive. So my suggestion to you would be to grab one of these. That's right, the old plug-in drill, the one that's been sitting in your dad's basement since you were a baby. These don't die. They're gonna take the abuse that we're gonna put it through because you'll be surprised how hard it is to drive a hole saw through a chunk of rubber. And now hopefully you figured out where we're going with this. So I'm gonna spray some WD-40 in here because like I said, this is going to be surprisingly abusive. And we're gonna fit the hole saw in and then we're gonna go grab the right size hole saw because this is for the other side's bushing. Alright, so that's the inner piece dealt with, and now we need to get the shell out of the control arm, and that means you're going to need one of these. This is an air hammer with a sheet metal attachment, and before you say, I don't have an air compressor and they're too expensive to buy, check out this video here. This is how I got a free air compressor off Marketplace that didn't work, and I fixed it with garbage found on the floor of my shop. Same with the air tools themselves. Everybody is switching over to this stuff now. Electric, which means that you can go to thrift stores, Marketplace, Craigslist, garage sales, you name it and you can buy air tools for next to nothing because nobody wants them anymore. And if you're working on a lot of cars, honestly, there's nothing wrong with having air tools around. I still find them extremely handy. So let me show you how we're going to use this to get that out of the control arm. Before using the air hammer, I'm actually just going to take a drift and a regular old hammer and we're going to try and pound the shell down a little bit to make a bit of a V. Of course, securing these things in a vise even can be a bit of a challenge. You could actually do this entire job by hand with a hammer and a chisel as well, but the air hammer definitely makes life a lot easier here. Once we have this pushed down far enough, we have a bit of space in there, I'm gonna take our sheet metal tool, press it in here, and we're gonna try to split the shell in half. Uh, ah, yes, that went exactly according to plan. Now, I'm gonna try put it in the vise a different manner. I'll see if it stays this time, but I kind of doubt it will. Yeah, it's already moving. Now we flip the control arm around. You can see I've already started here so you can sort of see what I'm trying to get to. Right here is the seam where this ring is actually welded to the control arm. That gives us the perfect spot to be able to get our slitting tool into and then start pushing the bushing out. and smooth out any burrs that may have been created in the process of removal. And you're ready to put your new bushing in. 
Those of you that stuck around to the end, let me show you why I don't use the drill bits anymore. This is the piece I just removed from the inside of one of the bushings, and it looks like just a big chunk of rubber like you probably expected. Here's the reality of it though. There's actually another metal sleeve that sits in between the two layers, and that thing loves to cast drill bits, and that's why you break them off all the time. Have a good one, we'll see you next time.